Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. We all know what day it is, and happy, happy 4th of July from here and all around the world. I'm Stephen Cuoco, and you're listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. 200 countries and counting. I'm loving it. Whether you're listening to us on the iOS or Android app, Alexa, Siri, and Apple Music. Top 10 in news on Apple Music. If you got an Apple Music account. Apple iPhone, go ahead. It's going to be free for you. If you want it free, go to our website, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio's Power985.com. Download the app. Uh, You got Alexa. Everyone has an Amazon account. Add us into your Alexa skill. We also stream live on live uh, FM radio, Streama, Streamitter, uh, MyTuner, and more. Taking a breath for today, I'm going to honestly say we shouldn't have to have one day. We shouldn't have to have the government. We shouldn't have to have a calendar. We shouldn't have to have whoever they think belongs in charge of the human race (laughs) to tell us when we're going to celebrate, how we're going to celebrate, and what we're going to do. I'm going to honestly say honor the collective Honor your fellow man, your fellow woman, your fellow child, your your dog, your cat, your best friend. You can do that every day. You know, you can honor, you know, soldiers and, you know, the, the military, the, the people that are truly for the public every single day by, de- by being a great person, by doing exceptional things in a world to make your life better to make and to help other people feel safe and encouraged and respected and most importantly, heard. How often are are people trying to fight to be heard? We see this on social media all the time. The exaggerated content that's on there. Um, Just sit and listen. That's the best gift that you can give to someone. Listen, every day can be a birthday. Every day can be a New Year's celebration. Every day you can honor a loved one who's living or who's no longer here. Every day you can give and share it forward to honor yourself and everyone, no matter who they are and from all walks of life. You shouldn't have to have a calendar or a job or a company to tell you when you should stop and take a break. You should automatically do that when you need to and when you're ready to. So just to know that. Uh, Sean, what's going on? Please tell me uh, what's happening here. (laughs) Is it one of those days? I hope not. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> i know i know thank you uh appreciate my team christina love you very much uh my team out there in manchester uk new york i'm currently here in vegas i'm looking forward to uh walking out onto the rooftop and watching the fireworks tonight it's going to be very interesting i used to live at veer towers over by the Cosmopolitan. So I, I went from, I think, what, the west side of the Strip. Now I'm on the east side. Uh, and I like it over here. So I'm like in the middle of, of a lot of great things. So it's going to be great. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't know what you all you guys are doing, but I'm not going anywhere. I've got a nice dinner planned for myself. I may have a nice cocktail later. Uh, but other than that, To me, every day is a vacation day, but every day is a work day. And I believe that if you put five to 10 minutes 
into something you love that you want to be fulfilled. Like we got Joaquin Buckley today. Whether he's running, whether he's in the gym training, or he is sparring, or someone's sparring him, whatever it is, you can head on over to his Instagram, and you will see that Joaquin, new Mansa Buckley, he's got it going on. This young professional man knows what he's doing when it comes to performance, education, resiliency, training, fighting, helping even to make you laugh. Um, It's uh, New Mansa 94. Once again, Joaquin Buckley, New Mansa 94. Whether you're just joining us now or if you're just joining us or may join us later, this interview will re-air on Power 98.5. You can check the schedule, whether on the website or the app, anytime. You can uh, find out all of our upcoming shows, whether it's Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. Let me tell you with Lady T, she's got a lot of great stuff coming out. And we've got Catherine Swain coming back. We've revamped. We've got a new freshness that's going to be coming to her show. And you guys are going to find out more about that. And it's truly exciting. People have been asking, when's Catherine coming back? Well, she's been doing a lot of travel, and she's coming back. And I'm excited to announce that after having a great conversation with her last night, I was in a gym all the way up until about 10 o'clock. I didn't get to sleep until, what, about 1.30 this morning? <laughs> Sean, you wouldn't know a darn thing about that. I'd be lucky if I see you on a, uh, what do they call that? Is it, what is that? Pelican or whatever? What is that darn bike? <laughs> A treadmill, but you know, you do your thing, but listen, you got to do more than just lifting a Bud Light or whatever else you you're drinking there, but, but we love you and don't get me wrong. Sean is, Sean looks great, you know, but, but there's something about guys that are like in their late twenties and early thirties to where they seem to still stay very comfortable with their body and don't take much effort into uh, putting what they need to into it at times. But uh, yeah, uh, trust me, your body is not going to look like that forever. Don't just rely on your genes or, you know, your genetics and whatever else you're doing. But, you know, hey, to each their own. Uh, Yeah, New Mansa 94 is Joaquin Buckley's uh, Instagram. Check it out. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, you want to share any love, support, or have any questions for Joaquin, you can click the messenger, whether on the uh, app or on the website, that bottom icon in the right-hand corner. Uh, I, I don't. Do we have any other announcements? How are we today? Good. Yeah, we've got. I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, we're, I'm going to um, cover that later. I know we've got UFC. Uh, 290 uh, this week, uh, Power Slap 3 this week. Uh, this is International Fight Week, so look forward to that. Um, you're going to get a lot more and, and see a lot more on my socials, and I've been sharing a lot. My shorts, I love my YouTube shorts. My numbers do so well on there. I put time into my videos, but I don't I don't put effort in other people's platforms because they're not made for us. They're made for their their advertisers and their investors and sponsors. But uh there's one company that needs to stop fucking around uh with their bullshit and uh and and leave my videos alone uh because uh if you think you're god, you're not. <laughs> Someone always falls off. You can get as high and mighty as you want to. But you better be fucking careful of how and mighty you really get. Because when you fall, and you will fucking fall, there's an expiration date for everything. You're going to splat so bad on the fucking ground that people won't even recognize that you ever existed. So watch your attitude. Um I keep myself like, I, and 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 I'm going to just say this, and I don't mind being transparent. Some people who like to think they're God and play God like to meddle in other people's business. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not the type of person to where you met. If you're going to meddle in my business, you better have a darn good reason if you want to come meddle in my business. I keep it fair, honest, 
and I do the right thing. I don't put my nose into anything else. But let me tell you something. You got dirty laundry. If you are a scumbag, if you are an idiot, if you are someone that is just a fucking asshole, be careful where you put your nose in my business. I'm an Italian, Sicilian, Puerto Rican, and a Brazilian in Aries from New Jersey. You come knocking on my door, you come putting your nose in my business. Believe you me, I will take down a door. I will not only show you my nose, but I will show you my Aries heat because I don't put up with the bullshit. People are people have taken social media. They have taken online. They they've taken where this world is at. Everybody's a vigilante. People think that they can do whatever they want without repercussion. People think that they can involve themselves in other people's lives and interfere and meddle and disrupt and think that they can possess. They act like demons. They think that they can possess other people. That is not reality. Remember, there is a higher power. There is a God. There are other forces out there. So wherever you're using your energy, your way of being for evil against something or someone else, there is another side. There is another light that is there. And trust me, it doesn't sit back and put up with it. So if you're not coming to the table with love and respect and understanding, then don't come to the table. Play with the pigs in the mud. Don't come to the table where it's clean and where we're doing right and where we're doing good and where we're creating greatness. Keep playing with the pigs. Keep playing in the slums, okay? Keep washing yourself in that dirty water because I don't want you to be coming in my clean pool. But on a, but on a new note, yeah, <laughs> on, a, on a, an extra note, you know, I'm tired of feeling restricted, you know, I, I do the right thing. You guys know that I do the right thing. I'm just going to keep it simple. We're going to get over to my good friend, Joaquin. I keep it simple. A lot of people do a lot of good in this world. But I'm going to have to say that, you know, just because I work in public relations, just because I am, I, I'm at the level where I'm at, doesn't mean I'm going to just sit back and not say anything. There's To me, that's complacency. I am not... I, I'm, there are times when I know when I should share something and there's times when I, I believe I shouldn't. But I'm going to take the opportunity, especially with having the listeners that I have, the reach of where I'm at, and I want to be able to bring insight because I'm not hearing anyone else say anything else. I hear whining. I hear temper tantrums. But what I would like to hear is communication civil communication to get resolved and results. Um, that's just where I'm clear. And, and I've told people I've had enough. You get to a certain point, I'm going to close by saying this, you get to a certain point, a certain place when you find peace and balance and tranquility within yourself, you get to a certain point, even with age, where you just will not tolerate. I've never been a person that tolerates shit. But I will say that I am at a place in my life to where I'm pushing back. I've always had no problem pushing back. But this time around, I'm pushing back in a fearless way. I am not going to worry about someone destroying my reputation or trying to destroy me. Been there, done that. I'm not going to concern myself or worry about someone coming in and tainting my reputation. I've got a solid reputation. I couldn't care less what other people think, but been there, done that. And I'm going to tell you, I've had the closest people who have been, who came across as an ally and have become some of my worst adversaries are family and friends. Some of the most people or most people in my life that have become the best allies are strangers. So get that. So with that being said, uh, we're getting back to the music. I want to add this on, Mr. Joaquin the Mansa Buckley. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. 
You are welcome. I usually don't do too long intros, but today, hey. I, I, today I felt like it. Today I felt it was <laughs> worthwhile. Yeah. yeah, it's your show, ain't it? <laughs> you can talk like that. <laughs> you know? and i and i love how you keep it real you keep it 100 you know you know where we come from man so uh i come from st louis man and that's all we do man we just try to speak the truth you know and you can't allow people or outsiders to try to you know keep you quiet you know if there's something that needs to be said say it you know definitely if you're speaking the truth so yeah i don't mind doing what you, uh i don't mind you doing what you're doing so keep it up yep I appreciate that. Uh, It's been quite a journey for you. It's been quite a journey of having the opportunity of getting to know you. And and it's a privilege to have you here with us. And uh, uh, whether people realize it or not, you are a, a person, a man, and a professional worth knowing, worth having a conversation with. I've got to ask, though, do you feel... Um, in, in everything you're accomplishing and everything that you're doing for yourself and for your family, do you still feel misunderstood? Uh, I do. I do feel misunderstood. I feel like, you know, where I, where I come from and my story and my background hasn't been heard. And it's not that the story is not out there. It's just it hasn't been pushed. So I don't really get mad at um, anybody for not pushing that story besides myself. Myself. So I need to pretty much be self-reliant and just let people know whenever I'm uh, talking to them, you know, giving my story and just telling my background. Or if I'm ever making a post, giving my story, giving my background. So even though I'm misunderstood, I don't think it's anyone's fault but my own, you know. So I need to be able to be consistent on telling my story every chance I get, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Heather Abuf. I appreciate you. Yes, we've got Joaquin, the new man to Buckley. He's the most viral UFC fighter of all time. Record, 16 wins, 12 knockouts. Yeah. And he's adding a lot more to that, Heather. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, I've got to ask, why MMA? Um, you know, for me, it started at an early, early age, and it, and it all started – from movies uh I'm, I'm still into into movies i, I actually want to be you know an actor one day and be able to show people different arts and different disciplines uh but it all started from an early age man and me just watching movies uh but besides the movies uh one day when i was in like sixth grade i, I could i never forget it you know uh i was on youtube and i was watching different videos about you know different martial arts and then the usc had just popped up you know as a highlight and I seen uh, Gary Goodrich, you know, pull off this uh, this amazing knockout or amazing finish and uh, called the crucifix. And ever since I seen that, I said, oh, OK, I could do this for real. <laughs> so ever since then, when I was in sixth grade, man, I just been obsessed with it. So, you know, right now I'm living a childhood uh, uh, dream, you know, so that's what I'm doing right now. Your accomplishments have only been in two years, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Two, two, two and a half. About, you know, yeah, yeah. Somewhat. You know, but this has been, I tell people, this has been a 10-year journey. You know, nothing that came overnight. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of struggle, a lot of heartache, you know, a lot of tears being shed. You know, I'm not I'm not scared to say it. You know, I, I didn't cry over this. So, you know, now that I'm here and now that I have, you know, the privilege to fight on the biggest promotion on the world, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, slow down. I'm actually going to pick up the speed, you know, where I'm at. You're 29. You still look about 21, 22. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm going to tell everyone, I mean, if you think that Joaquin looks huge online and, and on his Instagram and photos, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you look even bigger in person. I appreciate that. I think that's a compliment, I guess. <laughs> that day when I met yeah. you over there at the Santa Fe Hotel and I shook your yeah. hand, I mean, yeah. You, I mean, I don't know if The Rock or or what would be uh, jealous, but you're all shoulders <laughs> and chest and pecs and back. Yeah, man. yeah, man. Years, years of training, man. <laughs> years of training since I was 14, you know, 14, 13 years old doing the same thing, you know. And I tell people a lot of times I don't lift weights necessarily. I don't do like a lot of barbell workouts. I, I really kind of created my physique through calisthenics. So pull-ups, push-ups, squats, you know, plyometric, you know, I use my body as a tool in order to create the, you know, the physique that I want, 
You know, so I, I tell people all the time, you don't need a gym. You just, you know, you just need your body. You just get the moving and you'll get there, you know. <laughs> it was uh, back in what, November 19th of 2020. It says Joaquin Buckley's viral finish and potential knockout of the year uh, last month on Fight Island lit up the MMA and sports world. This is where it says one kick changed Joaquin Buckley's life. Do you remember that? Of course, of course. Um, it it definitely changed my life where, to the point where now people knew my name. And I tell people all the time, that's one of the hardest things to try to do uh, for yourself as a fighter is try to build a, a reputation and a brand behind yourself, you know, and create a name or make a household name for yourself. Uh, because even if you're a great fighter, even if you have uh, great talent, and even if you're, you know, a finisher, if people don't know who you are, people just don't know who you are. So that kick definitely put me on the map, and it really showed people who uh, New Manson was that night. So, of course, I remember. Yes, sir. How I come to really recognize how incredibly talented, and not only talented, what an articulate person and man you are is, and was at the UFC Vegas 73, and that was when you were against, uh, your match was against uh, Andre Fialo. Uh Incredible. Incredible. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, that, that, I think that's one of my biggest accomplishments uh, to date within the UFC uh, because I had a lot of negative energy around me. A lot of people telling me that I couldn't make the weight. A lot of people telling me I couldn't perform. You know, my last two fights, you know, coming off a loss, if I lose this one, I'm going, I was going to get cut. So I had a lot of things uh, coming around me where it was just putting me in a bad space. So I had to remove that and I had to get away from that noise. You know, this uh, disruptive noise that was uh, affecting me. And once I did that, you know, I was able to see myself as being one of the, on, one of the greatest fighters at, at 170 in my mind. You know, and I went out there and I performed and I, you know, and I did what I said I was going to do. So, you know, I tell fighters all the time, you got to get away from that negative noise if you want to be successful. Are people still finding out how incredibly amazing Joaquin the Mansa Buckley is? Or do you, or have you been experiencing in the last couple of years, if not most recently, that people make assumptions and are far too quick to write about you without finding the information out firsthand from you? Uh, the, the second one, a lot of people make assumptions. A lot of people have opinions and a lot of people uh, have answers to questions they never ask. So my, my biggest thing is I, I can't rely on that and I can't you know, focus on that. I can only focus on my myself and my journey. And the the story is going to tell itself and the story is going to write itself, you know. So my thing is, I don't mind people having assumptions, but as long as you paying attention, that's what I want you doing. So, you know, uh, but the story is still being written. And I think a lot of people are going to be shocked, you know, of really how great I am. They really don't know yet. It was reported back from the UFC Vegas 73, and Joaquin Buckley melts Andre Fiel with brutal knockout, calls out Logan Logan Paul for sponsorship. <laughs> Do you want to speak on that? Uh, I mean, I, I guess we can. You know, uh, I just seen an opportunity uh, for myself to, after I got the knockout, I see a lot of these things, you know, that, that the UFC been pushing. They got a lot of advertisement that's around there, and one thing that was poking out the most was Prime. And I said, hey, my man doesn't sponsor not one athlete in the UFC. So why not take this opportunity once I get this knockout to speak about that? And uh, eventually Logan Paul ended up re reposting my comment and talking about he was going to think about it. And he actually does now sponsor two uh, UFC athletes, uh, not just athletes, but champions with uh, Israel Adesanya and Alex Volkanovski. And a lot of people would think I would be upset, but actually I'm not upset. I'm just glad that he was able to pick somebody from the UFC to actually be help promote them and help uh, push their name and build their brand even more because that just helps us other fighters, you know, and maybe not just Prime, but maybe uh, Toyota, you know, does the same thing, sponsor an athlete. Maybe uh, Modelo sponsors an athlete, you know, and if that happens, I feel like, you know, I open the door so other people can walk through, and I'm glad it was those two guys. At the end of the day, do you believe that you would ever be added to the list or what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it. But, you know, like I said, you know, things that aren't in our control, we can't focus on. If it happens, beautiful. If not, hey, we keep moving forward. You know, 
as long as I'm able to fight, as long as I'm able to compete and show the world, you know, who I am in the cage, I'm perfectly fine. I don't need any sponsorships, you know, because I'm doing what I love to do. I have to say this. The moment everyone has the opportunity, sponsorship, endorsements for you now. And I'm going to say you're worth and you deserve to be expensive. But when a day comes, <laughs> that smile on your face, that's going to be when they really come and you're wondering why they weren't there before when they were there the whole entire time. I hope you add a lot of fucking zeros onto that. <laughs> we might. We might. Yes, sir. <laughs> but right now we're just going to keep the smile. I like okay. what you said. We're just going to keep the smile. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, honestly, aside from all of this and, 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 all of your your incredible accolades. Uh, what brings you to? I have to ask. What brings you the most joy in life? I mean, really, really, the most joy, Joaquin. Uh, seeing my son Isaiah. That uh, that that's my everything. And it's crazy when we knew that he was a uh, was about to be pretty much. You know, you know. Uh, my girl told me that she was pregnant. Uh, I, I was happy. I was actually, you know, uh, very excited to hear about the news. But the only thing that I was worried about is, like, I ain't got nothing really to offer. So with that being said, I was working at Walgreens, and uh, I kind of slowed down on my MMA career. And I, I, I'm not going to lie. I gave up on it. I kind of gave up on becoming and thinking that I'd be a world champion and everything of that nature. Uh, but knowing that he was on the way, it kind of sparked that back into me. So I worked overnight at Walgreens and uh, I used to listen to a lot of audio books and I, and I used to think about different, you know, martial arts moves that I could apply to my game because I was still training. Not saying I was literally thinking about getting back into uh, like the whole mindset of becoming a world champion, but just for my mental health, I was still training, but I made sure that I was like, whatever I need to do to, in order to be successful in time, that's what I'm going to do for him. So I need to build him something. So he sparked a, another flame in me that got me actually into the UFC, right? And uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be where I am. So that's my biggest joy. So every time I see him, it's a reminder that not only of, of his birth, but he he kind of rebirthed myself, you know, and put a new flame under me. So, yeah. Well, you're, that's my biggest joy. You're a great father. I don't see Thank how you. you parent, but I believe it. I can feel it in my heart. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's I love being a daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love being a daddy. So anytime I'm around and that's and that's the thing that's kinda unfortunate with the job that I do now, uh, is time is, a lot of time is sacrificed away from the family. Uh, but we had a conversation, you know, behind, you know, closed doors and everything of that nature. But you know, that that's one thing I always gotta just be reminded of. It's just hey, you know, spend your time wisely. So that's one thing I have to do. I can't just try to keep keep trying to fight and keep trying to promote and put and push my family to the side because that's what I care about the most. When everything is said and done and everything is over with, they they're the only ones that's gonna be there. So I gotta have that time for my son. I have to have that time for my life partner, and I have to t- have that time for my grandmother. You know, these are the three people that I care about the most in my life. In my life, and. uh you know, and like I said, that time that I spend here with the UFC and everything, that's time spent away from them. So that's what I'm trying to really fight for my time back. That's really what I'm doing. And not money. I'm trying to fight for my time back. Yeah. And your take you you doing video calls and stuff like that, right? With them? Yeah. Oh yeah. We yeah, we FaceTime every day. FaceTime every day. He hates it though. He hates FaceTime. Uh because he's like, Daddy, you need to be home. <laughs> 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 he knocked the phone over and stuff like that. Uh but you know, and I understand his frustrations and stuff like that. Uh, he's only uh, actually he's about to be three in August. He's about to turn three in August, uh, so he's getting older and he's starting to have a little bit of an understanding. You know what Daddy does. So anytime, you know, we go to the airport, he know Daddy about to leave, so he just breaks out crying. You know, and uh, so he knows that Daddy gonna be gone for a minute. But anytime I come back, once I come back home, he just embraces me like nothing else that I never felt that type of love before. You know. Just somebody that just wants you because of you. And, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. I, I feel sorry for, you know, certain people that 
aren't able to feel that type of feeling, you know. I want to say I want to thank you for sharing that because that's why I'm here. You know, as I shared with you um, in conversations outside, of, you know, uh, you know what we've had that um, I've put decades and a lot of time into television and reality TV and film and fashion in the entertainment industry, and I I still love it. Um, I just reached a place that you know. I just knew in my heart it was time to pick a sport and a sport to where I felt as though I can really be an asset to you as an athlete and you guys as athletes. Mm. And this is the reason why, because Mm. most people assume that when you're an athlete, no matter what sport you're in, that, that you guys are banking millions. That's not reality. I mean, these are the stories. I mean, what you have to put into it, the training, the time of way, the months, not just the weeks, the months that you have to put into this. And then, you know, having your son, your three-year-old son and, and, you know, doing your best to, to make sure that he, he's not experiencing abandonment issues and knowing that he's always loved and he's always remembered. That is, I mean, most athletes go through this, but this is why I picked um, MMA. This is why I I really uh, delved within the last several months into this and would love to continue is because these are the stories. This is the reality of what it's like, because like you said, you were working at Walgreens, you know, yes. people don't know, and you don't have to, to prove or share this on social media. It should be common knowledge, uh, within the information of, of promotion and advertising and journalism that you are a real person doing real things, making real sacrifices and there is a sense of a cost, and it's the fact to where it's it's the cost of what your humanity is all about because there is a lot of things that you have to condition and prepare for that not anyone can walk off the street and do what you do no matter if they were a former Marine or a uh, a 12-time Mr. Olympian. The, you have to be so – adaptable emotionally and mentally and then into physically for this and then to work everything else. Um, this is why you are, you are what makes being a man, a real man, because this is what it means to be a man. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. I appreciate that a lot. Um, it took time for myself to understand that, you know, uh, it took a minute for me to understand what sacrifice really meant. Uh, but like I said, once I had my son and the time that I spent away from him, that's that sacrifice. That is major sacrifice and money. I, you know, you can't pay for time back. That's the unfortunate part. But if I'm able to acquire the funds and, and, and the money that I need in order to be able to relax and, and have that time with my son, then that's what we're going to work is work on. That's what we're going to focus on. Uh, trying to get as much as we can out of the promotion that we fight for in order to live the life that I really want to live. So, you know, yes, sir. But it's all sacrifice at the end of the day. I uh, Is there anything that you would like to um, – I know I want to bring you back on again – I, I, I'm feeling really good about this this interview, and I know that we can go into a lot more. But before we close yeah. out, Joaquin, and yes, yes. what do you want to set the record straight on? Mm. Uh, I, I just want to set the record on just, just, just to let people know that I'm here for the fans and to put on for a great show whenever I fight. And I just want people to recognize and see me as a fighter, but not just only see me as a fighter, but see me as a father, see me as uh, uh, as a son, you know, see me as a human being, you know, see me as a person, because I think that's one thing a lot of people uh, don't get the opportunity to see is uh, what I do outside of the cage, the work that I do outside of the cage and the the, the people that I help and uh, the people that I cherish and I try to support. So, you know, I just want people to recognize that, you know, as, as much as I'm a savage fighter, <laughs> and I will admit that I am one of the best uh, fighters in, within uh, the company that I fight for, 
uh, I'm also a, a loving individual and uh, I only want to support and help people that uh, that need that help. So, you know, I just want people to know that uh, I need them to understand that I'm just a regular individual, you know. I'm just a regular person, a regular guy that needs that help to help others. So that's it. That's why I want to set the record on. Who would you like to give a shout out to? Uh, I'd love to give a shout out to uh, my grandmother, uh, Peggy Brooks. Um, she's the one that helped support me throughout this whole journey uh, in order for me to continue on where I'm going, the path that I'm, I'm leading down. And she always praying for, for a baby. So that shout out definitely got to go out to my grandmother. Peggy Brooks. Yeah, thank you, Peggy. Much love, much prayer, and many, many uh, great and loving thoughts to you. Uh, what's next for you, Joaquin? What's next for you this year? Uh, well, we're working on it right now. So I'm in uh, Las Vegas for International Fight Week, and I'm trying to push for a fight in September uh, to fight Jack, uh, Jack Della Maddalena. And if I'm able to get that fight in Australia, it'd be one of the most, uh, the biggest fight in my career, you know, not only just with the the competitor, but the show. And Australia is one of the most big events that we can have down there. And if I'm able to get on that show, things could start to turn around when I get that win. So, you know, I got a couple of things in the works and uh, that's one of the things I'm working on right now. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. You've got my direct private number. Just know you can call me anytime, any questions, anything at all, even if it's just to have a chat. That's what I'm here for. It's why I I'm ready and I chose this direction to add this to what I do and what I'm here for. And and you've got a you've got a family here and you've got a home here at Power 98.5. I appreciate that. Thank you, Stephen, for having me. Any, yeah, absolutely. Anything else before we uh, head out of this live? Uh, just you know, like I said, just support your support your man's by following me on New Mansa ninety four and follow my YouTube channel, uh, Joaquin Buckley Official, and that support alone will take me far. So thank you, thank you. Thanks again for tuning in live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power ninety eight point five Satellite Radio. This episode will re air. Definitely check the schedule on Power 98.5, whether on the iOS or Android app or on the website. Also, with the other shows that are up and coming, Alicia's going to have a new show this week uh, with, uh, I believe it's uh, So Sophia. Uh, that's going to be Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Uh, no, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. I believe Catherine may be coming back next week. Just check the schedule, especially whatever time zone you're in. That is always best. Remember, Joaquin, the new Mansa Buckley, the most viral UFC fighter of all time, and his record is 16 wins, 12 knockouts. His Instagram is newmansa94, N-E-W-M-A-N-S-A-94. And you know what's even easier? To learn more about Joaquin, the Mansa Buckley, Google, Yahoo, or Bing. Take a look at those photos. Take a look at those videos. Take a look at those past fights. You're going to be highly, highly impressed. Have a safe holiday weekend. Uh, Remember those uh, checkpoints are going to be happening. That's another reason why I'm not going. Well, I live on a strip. Everything's a walking distance. But still, don't underestimate. And you know what? With all due respect, living out here on the West Coast, uh... Not only do people, uh, for the most part, not know how to uh, drive when it's raining or even snow flurries, if there are any, but they don't even really know how to drive when it's 109 degrees outside like it is right now and uh, absolutely sunny and gorgeous. So if you can stay off the roads, just stay off the road or maybe take an Uber or a Lyft, but, uh, but be safe. Be smart. Once again, all great things. Joaquin Numansa Buckley. Head on over to his Instagram, Numansa94. Head on over to mine. I'm going to be sharing a lot more. Uh, Joaquin and I had a great photo taken uh, most recently when we were at um, uh, when we were at uh, UFC Fight Pass. Uh, Joaquin Buckley, most viral UFC fighter of all time. Can't argue with that. 
and a record of 16 wins, 12 knockouts, many, many more to come. Have a great day, everyone. Oh, and by the way, if you don't want to wait until we re-air this episode, it will be available on your favorite podcast station, whether it's Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Remember, top 10 in news on Apple Music, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, and we always deliver the best in radio shows. Have a great day, everyone. Friend us on your socials and let's connect. 